you take your books and turn with us, please, to James in the New Testament. You have Hebrews, James, and then you have Peter. Hebrews, I mean James chapter 1. Brother Justin Grinstead's father-in-law, who was a missionary in Canada for years, and his family grew up, and he sent his daughter to Crown College, where my nephew, Justin Grinstead, was going to college. And they met at Crown College and got married. And now he is a missionary. And uh, his father-in-law is a missionary evangelist. And I'm looking forward to hearing him tonight. And I know you will be blessed also. And uh, let's have a good number here to hear him tonight. In James chapter 1, I'm reading the first four verses. I preached not too long from this same text on the fault, all joy and wanting nothing. But I have another thought from these four verses that I've entitled, How to Pass the Test of Life. Would you notice verse number one, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad Greetings, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. The word temptation found up here in verse 2 means testing. Uh, Schofield says it means trial and test. I never did like to take tests when I was in school because I never studied. (laughs) After I went to Bible school, I studied and it was a joy to take a test because I looked with anticipation to see if he could... uh, stump me on anything. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the story of the young man who had taken his test in college and he made a zero. He went to the professor and he argued with the professor. He said, Professor, I don't think I deserve this zero. And the professor looked at him and said, neither do I, but it's the lowest thing I had to give you. (laughs) Maybe some of you uh, are going through a test, and maybe some of you are failing just as miserably in life, but God does have some tests. 
he had some examinations. And we are going to have to learn how to make a passing grade. James gives the examination or the test here in these four verses, and I want each of us to take the test. James, I think, is qualified uh, to give the test because he says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he was a brother of Jesus, a half-brother, but he attributed the fact that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. <coughs> I want you to notice the fact of the test here in verse number one. There's four things about the test that we need to consider. And the first thing is the fact of the test. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. First, I want you to notice the word scattered. God is talking to people who have uh, endured persecutions beyond uh, our imaginations. They were being hounded and hunted and they were wandering about as vagabonds. They had gone through such persecutions we can't imagine, I'm sure, uh, this ISIS group that is beheading Christians and uh, killing them with a sword and taking their heads off in our day is something similar to what these were going through. They were hunted as vagabonds. When James says to the 12 tribes, he is comparing New Testament saints to the Old Testament saints. He is comparing the church to Israel and Judah. And as Israel and Judah had been torn away from their friends, James uses this to describe the church. When James says to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, he is speaking to Christians everywhere. He is speaking to you and he's speaking to me. And this world is not our home. I appreciate the singing this morning. This world is not our home. I mean, you and I are just passing through this world. If you are a born again Christian, you will take this as speaking to you and remember the fact of the test. I don't know what test you're going through right now, uh, but every one of us will be tested. There are two forms of test. If you're taking notes, write down the fact of the test and then the forms of the test. In verse 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. That word divers 
means various kinds or all kinds of temptations. My trials and my testings may not be like yours and yours may not be like mine. They are many and they are varied, but they come and you will be tested. You say, not me, preacher, your day is coming. They come in two categories, these precious new converts. I guarantee the devil's already climbed up on your shoulder and said, ah, you're not saved. That thought's run through your mind. But you take him back to the word of God where he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And stick it right up his nose and say, what are you going to do with that old devil? I tell you, it's by faith in Jesus Christ. There's not one thing you can add to that. Not one thing you can subtract to that in order to get into heaven. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. Now after that, you will be tested. I hate to say it, but many a Christian has flunked the test. Many a Christian has uh, not made the grade. And all the very different tests of all sorts and kinds may be mentally, physically, it may be financially, it may be uh uh, in your home, it may be in your business, it may be morally, it may, but they come in varied forms. But you always remember that they come in two categories. There is the test first that is sent by God to cause us to stand. This is a test like you would test metal to see if it is pure. God's going to test you so that you'll see to yourself that you're right. I mean, it's like testing metal to see if it's pure. It is the kind of that Peter talks about when he said, think it not strange concerning fiery trials. This is sent by God to cause you to stand. Oh, how we need to stand in this day. So tests are sent by God to make you stand. And then the other category is there is the test sent by the devil to cause you to stumble. This is sent by Satan to cause you to sin. God never uh, tempts anyone to do evil. Satan wants you to stumble. Look at me. What will it take for you to stumble? What will it take for you to fall? Every man is going to be tested. I think of Samuel Stokes a missionary who worked with lepers in India 
in the early 1900s. He walked through the uh, Prussian region with only a bottle of water and a blanket. But he depended on God to meet his needs. In one village, Stokes was received uh, in a very particular hostile reception. The village leaders all sat in chairs in a circle, leaving Stokes to sit on the floor for the entire day. When he asked if he might teach them and preach to them the gospel and nurse their sick, they hauled out insults after insults at him and Stokes offered no reply. Finally, the men gave the missionaries some stale bread crumbs in a dirty bowl. Stokes thanked them and then ate it. This scene repeated itself for several days. But then on the third day, the top village officer laid out his turban at Stokes' feet, which was a sign of respect. And this is what he said. We heard that Jesus' disciples were commanded to love their enemies. The man said, and we declare decided to put you to the test. Having seen Jesus' love in action through Stokes, the amazed villagers turned the whole village over to his work. Oh, what will it take? What test will it take to get you off, of course. Some tests are sent by God to prove you. Some are sent by the devil uh, to cause you to stumble. God sends them to cause you to stand. The difference between the two tests is this trials are sent by God to cause you to stand. Temptations uh, uh, to sin is sent by the devil. The, uh, one is meant for maturity and the other is meant for misery. God allows both kinds. But he does not cause both, both kinds. He allows them, but he doesn't cause them. God can use both kinds and will. So there are many forms of tests. But write this down. There is the force of tests. In verse 2 he says, My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Just look at the words fall into. That is the way they come. Uh, you have this same term, fall into. In the story of the man going from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. This is the same word that is used here by Mark. It means to fall into 
suddenly, oh, beloved, you're going along just fine. I mean, everything seems to be all right. Your blood pressure's down. I mean, your bank account is up and everything seems to be going honkadory. <laughs> but then, suddenly, without warning, something happens. Like you get a bonus check. You got that extra money. You're so excited. You're going home a little fast. And wow, 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 wow. Them blue lights comes on behind. You pull over. And that officer says, I want to check your insurance and your driver's license, please. You look in the glove compartment and find everything, get Hand them to him. He says, where are you going? To a funeral or something? He <laughs> you're doing 70 in a 45 zone. He says, uh, I'll be back in just a minute. He goes back there and writes you out a little piece of paper and says, sign it. And you sign it. You look at it. And then you go to the courthouse or you mail it in. Buy a bonus check. $175 gone. Just suddenly. It can happen suddenly. Oh, it could be in the next telephone call. The next day that you leave, you can't head it off. There it is. The tests are not going to be removed by you getting saved. Just because you get saved, everything's not going to be rosy dozy. Everything's not going to be honka dory. It's not going to be way up here. Anytime you see somebody, it's always up here. They're pretending. You see, the tests are not going to be removed by getting saved nor lessened by being consecrated. For you consecrate yourself to the choir, consecrate yourself to the Sunday school class, consecrate yourself to visitation, consecrate yourself to being here on Sunday, being at the house of God that won't remove them. You see, they will come anyway. The difference is what the Christian has to do with his problem that the unsaved don't have. Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. When you fall, I mean, didn't mean to, don't want to, when you fall, but it comes anyway, what will it take to stop you? Think about it. I don't know about you, but there's a few things in my life I've made up my mind about. Uh, I've just made up my mind about it, and that's it. It's settled. It's in concrete, and that's it. I hope you're the same way. One last thought. I hope you write this down, and that is the fruit of the test. We've talked about the fact they're going to come, the forms, different kinds. Now notice, if you will, not only the force, but notice the fruit of the test. In verses 3 and 4, he says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let her 
patience have her perfect work, uh, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Why does God allow it? Why does God allow it? Preacher, if God could stop it, why doesn't he stop it? God is working something in your life. God is working something in all of our lives. Everything that God does and everything that God allows is for a reason. Here God mentions four fruits of this test. Notice, if you will, first of all, it is for your enjoyment. What? Look at verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. The tests are always uh, the road that will lead to a blessing if you'll just keep your eyes on him. I don't care what it happens. I was reminded last week of the time that I was driving home. I drove from Chilhowee, Virginia to Chattanooga twice every week all the years that I was in college or down at the Bible school. I'd leave after preaching on Sunday night and I'd drive to Chattanooga, Tennessee, get there about 5 o'clock, take a shower, be at an 8 o'clock class. And I'd done that for years until I graduated. One Friday evening, I was wanting to get home and driving like a teenager. <laughs> I was passing three or four trailer trucks down there at Rogersville on that long straightaway, and I couldn't get back in. I was got up to about 70. And then two precious little missionaries cut out right in front of me. Now I'm up to about 80. I couldn't get back in because of the line of traffic. I couldn't get over out of the way. So I, wham! I seen the car go up in the air and I could see their gas tank. I hit them so hard. Terrible, terrible. I called Betty and I said, you know where I'm at? I had 31 cents in my pocket. She says, no. I says, I'm in Rogersville jail. Now, uh, I mean, how in the world could you be faced with such a trial and the fruit be enjoyment under such a condition as that, preacher? I apologized to the missionaries. I apologized to the police officer. I told them I was a pastoral student going to college and wanted to get home and I'd but they took me to jail anyway. <laughs> well, while I was there, I called O.V. Sturgeon. He said, well, just sit there. I'll come and get you. <laughs> and he came and got me. But while I was there for about two and a half, three hours, I got to talking to a woman. And I said, what are you here for? So I started a conversation. And before you know it, she was on her knees and trusting in the Lord Jesus as her Savior. Now that was a blessing to me. And I was told last, I'd forgot all about that till last week. Somebody said, do you remember me? I said, I'm sorry, I'm getting up in years and can't remember much. He says, I was the woman you led to the Lord, the Rogersville jail. Oh, listen to me. Your trial.
trial may be for your enjoyment. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Then secondly, it's for your endurance. Look at verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The Lord wants to teach you how to be patient. You strong-headed men, you need to be patient. Do we have any overbearing women here? You need to be patient. (laughs) Now you you notice how I said, do we have any here? (laughs) It's for your endurement. It's for your encouragement. He says in verse 4, but let let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That word entire means complete and be complete, wanting nothing. In other words, uh, God sends trials uh, to make us mature, strong men and women for Jesus Christ. Babies cry, babies wet in their diapers and I could go further but (laughs) men and women it's what God wants to serve him then notice uh, in verse number four not only for your enlargement and for your endurance and for your enjoyment uh, but in verse four he says It's for your enrichment and entire, that it's complete, wanting nothing, enriched in everything. Oh, count it all joy how to pass the test of life. I don't know what you're going through or what you will go through but you can pass the test if you lean on him. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, in just a few seconds, we're going to sing an invitation song. And dear Lord, I don't know the test that some are going through. If I had to go through what they're going through, I may not be able to pass. My problems are not theirs and theirs is not mine but dear Lord you can help them and you are our victory you are our strength and our hope and dear Lord I pray that you might speak to hearts today may you have your own will and way in every Christian's life everyone that's not saved may they Yield their will to thee today. Have thine own way, precious Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.